Welcome to Create a Quiz. This video will show you how to create a quiz from scratch in D2L 10.3 and explain some key quiz settings. To begin, inside of my course, I'm going to Other Tools, Quizzes. This takes me in to the Manage Quizzes tab. I'm not going to the question library today. I'm going to go right to New Quiz. I have to give it a name in order to save it. I don't have to give it a category. I just need that if I've got a whole lot of quizzes and I need to keep them organized. I do need some questions. What's a quiz without questions? I'm going to make one. I'm going to make a multiple choice question because that's the most popular kind. I don't have to give my question a title. If I don't give it a title in lists, the question body text will show. I like to give a descriptive title. I'm going to set how many points I want this question to be worth. The default is one. I get to choose the difficulty. One is the easiest. I write my question text. If I want an image to be part of this question, I can insert it and put in my description. I go with the defaults here. It's what I like. I do choose to randomize options for my answer choices. If I want, I can put feedback in here. That'll be good if I ever want to repurpose this question in a self-assessment. I continue with as many answers as I need. One answer has to be worth 100% of the credit for this question. That would be the right answer. I can give a question hint or general feedback for this question if I like. I'm going to save and get out of here, but I could save and copy. Let's say I like this question and I want to make a very similar one for some reason. I can save and copy and then edit the copy independently of the one I just made. I'm going to save. There's my quiz with a question. I can make more new questions or I can import questions from my question library. So let's say I only need this one question. What do I do next? I say that I'm done editing questions. And now I'm back in that first page I went to. I get to decide how many questions I want on a page. There's only one here, so I'm not going to worry about it. I get to set header and footer. And here are my optional properties. Let's look at some of the other tabs in this quiz. The most important one is going to be restrictions. When I'm ready to give this quiz, I need to make sure it is active. That means it's available to be taken by students. I probably have a date range over which I want the quiz to be taken. And I'm going to display it in the calendar. I can also set a time limit. Two hours is the default. I've got a really short quiz, so I'm going to give 10 minutes. I go with the default on things like flagging. Students, if they run over the time limit, will still be able to submit their quiz but I will know. If I want something a little stricter than that, then I can enforce, I can set late limits and such. Advanced availability is something that you'll use when you are teaching the course if you have students who need special time. All right, I'm going to save what I've done, but I'm not going to close yet because there's one important aspect of this quiz we haven't talked about, the grade. I'm going to assessment. And in order for this quiz to go into the grade book, it needs a grade item. If I had already built my grade book, then I could find the grade item right here. I haven't, so I can make a grade item right on the fly. And I'm going to call it the same thing as my quiz. That will prevent confusion on students' part. I set how many points are possible. I save. Now I see that my grade item is associated with my quiz. This quiz is going to be self-grading. I'm going to click Automatic Export to Grades and allow attempt to be set as graded immediately upon completion. Those two things will let students see that quiz grade and see it in their grade book right away. That won't be what you want for every quiz, but it's what I want for this one. Attempts allowed. Do I want multiple tries? Do I want just one try? That's my choice. If I do allow multiple tries, then I get to decide how the gradebook reflects 
those multiple attempts. I'm going to give students two tries and use their highest grade. If this were a midterm or a final exam, I might allow only one try. Attempts are just one way you have flexibility in using the quiz tool to create different forms of student assessment. I am done with this quiz. I check restrictions to make sure it is active, and I save and close. One last thing. Instructors are often baffled as to how to preview the quiz that they've made for students. You don't do it from the student role. Instead, you do it right here in Manage Quizzes. If you're not here already, you go to Other Tools, Quizzes, and that puts you right into Manage Quizzes. To preview my first quiz, I use this black triangle and choose Preview from the menu. And I have very much the student-like experience. In this video, you have seen how to create and build a quiz and explored some of the different settings and features of D2L quizzes. Now you are ready to go to your sandbox or your actual course and start building the quizzes you need. If you would like to learn more about the special kinds of quiz questions that are available to you in D2L, you might like to view the Creating Quiz Questions video, which also introduces the question library. When you are preparing a class for the new term and that class has quizzes, you'll want to take a look at the Quizzing Students video for some classroom management tips that are specific to quizzes. In addition to quizzes, D2L has two related tools that utilize the same question library but have unique features in their delivery, self-assessments and surveys. If you want to know more, check out our YouTube channel or come to an open lab session on any NLU campus.